So we are looking at a R985 radial engine and we know that there are situations where we have a barrel separation which basically um, you're looking for you know any kind of uh, exhaust or anything like that that's coming out of this third fin up here on the head. Um, in the situation that I'm going to go through here I actually um, and I've sent this off to Covington and they've confirmed that this is in fact a, a bad cylinder but I didn't have the separation on the head up here like you normally get um, so what I wanted to do is kind of show now we're looking at the front side of the engine and let's see if I can turn this light down just a little bit um, we're looking at the front side of the engine and this very first fin up here down here on the on the main part of the cylinder and it, it's hard from the front it, it's actually a little bit difficult to see um, what is going on um, if you look at an angle here you'll notice that there's some black down here on the bottom of the cylinder um, the, the problem is, is this isn't actually where the failure happened. Um, we've we've kind of got a, a bit of separation or leak um, in the cylinder wall. And this is just the bottom side of it. And, and you can see um, some evidence of, of the burning, you know, the oil and stuff coming out here. Um, but if we come around here, and this is where... I had actually found the, the problem. Um, if we come around here and take a look at the back of the engine, the first thing that I saw that was a little suspicious is you'll notice the oil that is pooling up, it's getting blown back here on this pan and then running down. And this is very sticky uh, burnt oil that, that is on here. Um, so that was one clue that, that I had something going on. Now, the reason that it was a little bit of a clue is that the back of this engine is very, very dry. Um, so if we come up here and take a look at all of the cylinders and the hoses and, and all of the stuff up here, there's really nowhere for oil to be coming from. And yet I've got oil very thick back here on this, on this pan. And so I got to looking, and if you look at the number three cylinder, you'll notice that it is very very dark on that first fin back here and this is where the main part of the crack is um, now it is worth noting that this cylinder has 79 over 80 um, on the test on the compression test so you would not have found this by doing a compression test i also tried to spray soapy bubbles on it and it didn't show any sign of any kind of crack um, it, you know it's kind of the evidence here plus Covington confirming that this was a problem um, before we we really decided to take it off. Um, so that that oil and burned uh, on the back side of that number one fin on the main part of the cylinder was another sign. And then another suspicious sign, and it may be a little hard for me to show this in the video, but this intake um, manifold that's right here you can see right up in here there's a whole bunch of oil and and stuff and it has been pressure blown onto this hose and there's no air coming from the front that would be blowing back like this so it's, it was just very suspicious the amount of oil and it's again it's thick black burnt oil that's stuck to the side of this intake tube and and this wasn't here when we did the annual because we had cleaned this entire engine and and made sure that we didn't have any leaks and stuff so this is a a fairly recent occurrence probably within the last five hours or so um but that's the you know what what we had had found on here so um another thing to work that's worth mentioning too is this this engine's got about 500 hours on it and or about 560 hours on it and it has already um, got a number of blown exhaust gaskets. Um, you can see um, in here the, the amount of damage that's been done from these uh, exhaust gaskets. So it's uh, definitely something else that you wanna probably replace the exhaust gaskets after a period of time because they definitely uh, can do some damage. But what I'm gonna be doing today is taking this cylinder off. I've got a new one from Covington. 
um, and holy cow, do you not want to replace these? They're very expensive um, for a rebuilt one. They don't even have any new ones. Um, so this is not something that you really want to do on a regular basis. But so today, what, we're, what I'm gonna be doing is documenting how to take this cylinder off and then how to put it back on. So the first thing that we're gonna be doing is taking the baffling off. So um, these baffles here, um, they've got, uh, you'll notice a, a screw in, in the thing. So you just take the wing nut off and it pulls this piece of the baffling out. Um, and then that releases this back piece here to, to get out of the way. So we, we're gonna compress the springs and take all of the baffling off both sides of the cylinder because we've got to get to it to be able to get everything out. Um, one thing is when you do take the, the baffling out, before you can pull that back baffling out, you'll notice the primer line to the cylinder is actually going in here. You've got to take that out and actually push it through the grommet um, to get that out of the way so that you can get the, the baffling out of the way. So now we have the spark plugs out of both sides. Um, we've taken loose the uh, EGT probe. Uh, now we're taking the intake manifold off and there is one of the intake manifold bolts actually has a safety wire in it here. Um, I'm not quite sure what that safety wire is going to or what its purpose is, but we'll figure that out and uh, get that off. So our next step is to get the intake off. So every one of the intake manifolds has a safety wire. It has a bolt that goes through it, a safety wire um, to keep this thing from coming loose at any point. Um, in order to get the back part of the intake manifold off, you've got to have a tool to get in here. And, and I, I got this off of eBay, um, but you can find these. Um, and so this thing just slides into here and then you unscrew this uh, screw here or this nut to get the intake, the this part of the intake manifold loose. In order to keep from messing up this dog bone, because um, there's not very many of these things left, I don't think, in the world, um, we're gonna pull both of these valve cover uh, valve covers off and then just pull this off as an assembly so that we don't have to bend this thing. Um, these are in pretty good shape and I don't wanna, I don't wanna mess them up. So we're pulling both these valve covers and then we'll end up pulling both of these valve covers down here, the ones that jump in between the two out, the two cylinders on both sides of this main jug. And then we'll get that stuff out of the way. So just like with the intake manifold, we've got a special tool here that goes, slides into the, the teeth on the push rod tubes to unscrew these nuts. So we got to unscrew both of these so that we can get the push rod tube loose so that the cylinder will come off of it. All right, so now we've got our valve covers off, the rocker arm box covers off. Um, so we can we got the, the dog bones out of the way. So now we literally are ready to pull this thing off. The only thing left is to take the uh, cylinder head bolt, the nuts off. So that's gonna be the next step. The cylinder head nuts off, you've got to have a tool uh, similar to this. Um, I actually found this again on eBay, um, but it's a, a 12 point socket um, welded in here at an angle so that you can actually get to all of the cylinder head bolts. tubes back in there. And I've got the piston down at the bottom so it doesn't flop around for the moment. So 
that is all there is to getting the cylinder off. And so now we'll go back. We'll go back and put the cylinder back in in just a moment after we get everything out of the box. All right, so now I've turned the crankshaft around so that the piston is all the way out, and so we're gonna remove the piston. So to do that, we're just gonna pull this wrist pin out. Attempt to pull the wrist pin out. piston off and let the rod sit over there for a moment and so now we've got our our piston out I'm gonna stick the wrist pin back in here for the moment so we were talking about hydraulic locking earlier and uh, you can see the oil that sits down in the bottom of the case here and it sits up on top of the cylinders and so what or the pistons and what ends up happening is it leaks down into the cylinder head itself and that's where you get the hydraulic locking so that thing that we have that we put on the bottom of the engine is actually draining the oil out of this bottom of the, the crankcase here so that you don't have so much oil sitting up on top of the pistons and therefore you got less to leak down into the top of the head. All right, so here's the cylinder uh, installed. I didn't install us actually sliding it on because uh, it's a little bit, I had uh, some help. Um, but basically all you're gonna do is pull the piston out um, and slide the uh, cylinder in, get the wrist pin lined up and put in. Um, and then there's a wiper ring on the bottom. So once you slide it on a little bit, you gotta squeeze the the uh, other, the last ring in with your hand to get it inside the cylinder. It's not very hard, um, but that that lets the whole piston slide up inside the cylinder, and then you just slide it down on the nuts. I mean, on the studs. Um, each one of the nuts gets torqued to 300 inch pounds. Um, you also have to take the uh, primer line out of the old cylinder and your uh, cowling uh, mount or the, the uh, little rubber mount um, off of the old cylinder and put them on here. Um, your push rod tubes um, get new uh, leather uh, washers that, that go in and a rubber seal that go on each end. Um, there, it's a thin, uh, a thin leather washer on the inside, on the inboard side, and then the same rubber seal goes on both sides. Um, and then this is a little bit thicker washer that goes on here. Um, and, it, and it's basically just covering up the end of the tube. Um, this tube is tapered at one end. So in order to get that end done, you actually slide that piece off this end so that you can put new stuff on it. Um, so everything comes off this end once you unscrew it all. Um, so that was pretty simple to do. Um, so both of the push rod tubes have been done. Um, we've got to, now we've got to go in and actually adjust the uh, valve so that we've got everything with the right tolerance and stuff. Um, and then I'm going to reinstall the intake manifold and, and the other stuff that we've got here on the back. But we're getting very, very close to having it done. 
So we have gotten the valve covers on. We got the um, uh, tolerance adjusted on the rockers. Um, it's a ten thousandths on on all of those. Um, so we got all that adjusted. We got everything torqued and tightened up. Um, all the torque specifications are actually in the overhaul manual. Um, but we've got everything ready to go. So we are. Uh, at this point, ready to start putting the baffling back on and the exhaust. Um, we've got the intake manifold back in. Um, so we're ready to put the exhaust on and put the hook up all the baffling and then take it out and run it.